hell do people say they can move it? But I ain't gonna get a hundred thousand dollars. road in uh, central Arkansas there's a, a little lake and on the shore of this lake is a fantastic historic railroad business car it's called the Traveler it was built in the early 1900s uh, for the president of the Cotton Belt Line a historic railroad in the United States uh, more information in my notes uh, today about the Cotton Belt uh, Railroad, a link to a really fascinating article about it. But uh, we were in Arkansas to visit uh, family and old friends and make some new friends. And among the new friends we made was a gentleman named Bob Abbott. Now, anyway, the, the car was built in, 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 in 1905. The Gould people owned most of the railroads. And their son was the president of the Cotton Belt Railroad, St. Louis Southwestern. And they built that car for him, President. And it was, oh, it was unbelievable. Mahogany and everything inside. And then the cotton belt got it back. And Will Rogers used it and, and traveled the whole United States and made speeches off of the, off of the uh, observation. But it was a big deal. They tell you how much money they spent on it. And then it wasn't just a short period of time, like a month or two. They advertised in the paper saying they wasn't going to use it anymore. They were going to scrap it. And then everybody got to wondering, why I scrap that thing? And then the next thing we know, we find out that the Elrods here in Rice and Arkansas bought it. So he, they were big here. So they put this thing out here on, on the lake. So about 20 years ago, the Elrod family put the property up for sale and Bob bought it. And the sale included the, uh, the Traveler. In fact, that's the reason he bought the, the property was because of the cool old uh, railroad business car. Well, we're boarding the Traveler from the observation deck at the back of the car. This is where the famous Will Rogers gave his speech as he traveled around the country on the Traveler. Yeah, the uh, deck opens in, up into a small parlor, and uh, the parlor uh, has a little bit of seating. It's kind of a little private uh, conversation area. And uh, the parlor then uh, opens into a long hallway, and in this hallway are several staterooms, but also a hidden panel behind which is the electrical infrastructure of the train. I love these old glass fuses. I love this old uh, fuse box. I love this wiring loom. To me, this is my favorite part of the train. Probably not yours, but I love old technology. Now, uh, you probably like this a little bit better. This is this beautiful mahogany is part of one of the two staterooms on the train. The curved thing you see on the top is actually a bunk bed that uh, has a mechanism that drops it down so that you can put a second person in here. A nice mattress. Uh, there's two staterooms. The train has, I believe, four bathrooms. So one for the crew and it has uh, it has uh, uh, three more for passengers including on suite bathrooms for the suites and also a um, has this bathtub and have you ever seen a bathtub on a train before it's probably my first time uh, continuing down the hallway there's another stateroom this is another one of those drop down bunks here it is uh, partially folded down there's a chain mechanism that's operated by a crank that the porter uses to open and close these bunks as they're needed now uh, the next uh, room on the train is the back room. It's uh, it's kind of a meeting room, dining room area. It's got some beautiful leaded glass uh, cabinets in it. It's got this beautiful mahogany table. Uh, this is all, I believe, all original furniture from the train. Here's one of those bunks that's dropped down. Uh, and behind this room is the crew compartment and the kitchen for the train. And as you can see, the finish is not quite as fancy as the rest of the train. This is the crew uh, parlor. It's got a drop-down bunk, also a, a drink station, an ice box, and some other things in there. This is the enunciator for the train, so when people pull a bell in one of the rooms, this lets the crew know that they are needed in a particular part of the train. Uh, this is the emergency equipment that's back in the crew quarters, an axe and a sledgehammer hidden back there in case of emergency, break glass. And finally, this is the kitchen. The kitchen is gorgeous. I wouldn't mind cooking in this kitchen. It has a wood stove that was converted 
to electricity, but it could be put back into shape as a wood stove very easily. I love this kitchen. Uh, again, one of my favorite parts of the train. Well, well, when this car when this car got to to Pine Bluff, back to the Cotton Belt, uh -huh. uh, th that's when it got the steel put on the side. Yeah, they put it a, put the steel sheeting on the outside because of the it. wood had gotten gotten deteriorated. Somehow. I you know I wouldn't say if it deteriorated, knowing the railroad, they replaced it and then put yeah, it on there. Yeah, yeah. They wouldn't have put no. They wouldn't have done no job like I do. You know, yeah. just put rouge and lipstick on it. Did it again, did they? No. No, they used it for years after they got it back from Texas. They used it as a as they used it as a business car for years and years. It was it was, it run on the Texas division down there by the assistant superintendent for years. Mm -hmm. They had a north kind of got northern division, southern division, from St. Louis to Texas County Shreveport, and then the the southern division from Texas County down all through Texas, and that goes to uh, Gatesville, Texas, uh, Fort Worth, on out to. I went out to the south of Fort Worth or someplace. But they had a lot of railroads, you see, but they this the uh superintendent which was headquartered in Tyler. Yes, sir. They uh used it there. And then in like I say, in nineteen fifty eight they brought the car to Pine Bluff and then and, and they started working on it, rebuilt it. Just you know, put new air conditioners in it and new upholster mm -hmm. and uh, you know, all shined it up, new paint job, and then it was an article come out in the paper that they were going to scrap it hmm. for after scrap they, iron. After they none, none. Never, oh. never made a trip after that. The only why. trip it made was from Pine Bluff to the Riser. I wonder why they put all that money into it and then not use it. Mm, railroad name. Mm. That's the way they do. They mm. even, they, you know, they, people do that today. Mm. Just, you know, just change their mind about stuff. Well, there's, you know, I think somebody's going to get this car, and I'm sure somebody is. I don't think it's going to turn into dust. I think it's going to. It's too special for that, you know, and I hope it's a museum that gets it. Um, but, you know, if it's not, it's going to be some another museum somewhere else or a collector or or somebody that wants to put it back in service as a private Yeah, you know, as, car. as I tell my family, you know, really and truly, a man that's got a man that's got million dollars, you know, spending 500000 or or a uh, million dollars on something that he wants to do. He ain't, no, ain't nothing. Look what the boy done. Had all the money and bought Twitter. So what would you like to do with this car? You've had it for 20 years. 20 and, years. And uh, Well, the you... big deal is, uh, like I'll tell you about the, about the Martha Mitchell house. You know, you don't, it's very difficult to, to replace history once it's gone. Yes, sir. Uh, and I don't, you know, I don't want to, the, I don't want the thing to just sit here and uh, twenty another twenty years Turning goes by and, and it doesn't fell down on, yeah. on the on the wheels. Now the wheels ain't gonna fall down. No, you know they may change colors, but they ain't gonna fall. This is this is not no junk here, is it? No, sir. This is. <laughs> Would you say it's one of the prettiest you've seen? I oh well, I haven't been in many, but I'd say it's really pretty. It's a beautiful car. I wish and you'd it's, say it's, it real loud so they could. Well, that's it from our visit to the Traveler to uh, with Bob Abbott, and uh, just. Uh, just uh, down the road from uh, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, in the woods of uh, rural central Arkansas. It was an extraordinary day. Bob's an extraordinary guy. I know that um, from talking to Bob that what he really would like to do with this train is to see it go to a railroad museum in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, which is, you know, just up the road. But, uh, you know, it's a small museum. They operate on volunteers. Uh, it's not a particularly wealthy part of the uh, of the country and uh, you know finding uh, finding money for cultural things is not easy so um, you know who knows who knows what will happen with the uh, with the traveler but if you're interested in helping out if you're interested in being part of the fun uh, if you're interested in seeing this uh, train kind of move to a place where the public has access to it or um, if that's not possible if you're interested in seeing it uh, move into private hands that's a possibility too. Uh, just be in touch. Uh, I'll be happy to pass on any any messages to Bob, or you can probably find him yourself. He's not a hard guy to find. 
Well, that's it for this edition of the uh, Department of Wacky Ideas, and uh, I really appreciate you tuning in. We're doing really, really well. I think we're up to 7,000 views uh, in total so far on this channel, so I appreciate each and every one of you for uh, paying attention to these, these weird ramblings. That's it from uh, the E-Shed here in North Florida. I hope that, uh, that you're healthy, that you're happy, and that you're uh, kind to your friends. And they're kind to everybody. Ciao.